اعوذ باللہ سمیل علی من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم شہر رمضان اللذی انزل فیه القرآن خدن للناس و بینات من الہدا والفرقان وقال رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم انسام رمضان ایمانا و احتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه Respected brothers and sisters in Islam Let me ask you in Punjabi Jag de ho Sare jag re ho na Inshallah sare brother Brother khlojo sare Khlojo 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 All the brothers please stand up inshallah Inshallah all the brothers stand up Just to wake you up inshallah So that you listen to me very carefully I'm not gonna take much of your time Now give each other a hug A brother right next to you Give him a tight hug And tell him you love him Tell him you love him. <laughs> MashaAllah. Now sit down. I could have asked the sisters to do the same thing, but sisters, if you disturb them, it takes half an hour to get them in order. That's a problem. So inshallah, I will request from all brothers to stay for another few minutes. And inshallah ta'ala, you will benefit from the message I have to deliver. Our Shaykh here, right next to me, our beloved Shaykh, in his presence, I don't see why I should be talking, because he's from a kibar ulama in this country. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and his family. They have been serving this deen for a very long time. My request today is to understand the blessings of the Quran. This brother who just spoke before me, Ask him how the Quran can change lives. Ask him how valuable the Quran is. How much of a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is. And if you know the Quran and if you are close to the Quran, you cannot be misguided. Because this month of Ramadan which we are witnessing right now, it was in this month when the Quran was revealed. Shahru Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Why? Hudan linnas, a guidance for mankind. Wa bayyinat min al huda wal furqan. It is a clear, decisive proof from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a criterion between haq and batil. So the Quran separates truth from falsehood. So the Quran gives you that incentive in life to live a life full of humanity full of civility, full of peace, compassion, and justice. If you lose track of the Quran, then you've lost everything. Like the Shaykh beautifully put it, in Surah Al-Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares himself to be the most merciful being ever imagined. Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman, the merciful. Why? Why is he the merciful? Why is he the most Merciful being ever imagined. Why? Allam al Quran. Like the Sheikh put it, Allam al Quran because he taught the Quran. And then he goes into other signs. Khalaq al Insan. Allamahu al Bayan. Al Shamsu wal Qamaru bi Husban. Wal Najmu wal Shajaru yasjudan. All of these signs come after. The ultimate sign of Allah's mercy. The ultimate sign of victory. The ultimate sign of triumph of truth over falsehood is the Quran which is the ultimate sign of Allah's mercy so you lose track of the Quran you lose everything the biggest miracle of the Quran is what many many a times when our brothers or when our du'at when our ulama talk about the miracle of the Quran they talk about the scientific miracle in the Quran you know, they talk about embryology, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the different stages children go through in the mother's womb. Then they talk about expanding heavens, they talk about astronomy, they talk about water cycle, they talk about other natural phenomena in the Quran. And then they talk about the linguistic miracle of the Quran, it's ascetic reception. When the Quran, they were reciting Allahu Akbar, your heart softens, it melts and you start crying. Even Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu when he came out to kill the Prophet sallallahu with a sword in his hand and the messenger of Allah sallallahu has prayed for him Allahumma izzal Islam bi ahabbi rajulayni ilayka 
Oh Allah, strengthen Islam by one of these two, either Umar bin Khattab or Abu Jahl bin Hisham. One of these two. And he comes out with a sword to kill the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The ascetic reception of the Qur'an, the effects of the Qur'an, mesmerizing effects of the Qur'an. He hears the word of the Qur'an, Surah Taha, and he melts. He starts crying, Ma hadha kalam al-bashar. This is not the word of a man. Take me to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he accepts Islam. This is one of the miracles of the Qur'an. But there is a bigger miracle of the Qur'an the effects of the Qur'an on human psychology. How the Qur'an can transform a people who were the most ill-equipped people on the planet. The Bedus, the Arabs, who used to kill their own daughters alive. They used to worship idols, they used to eat dead meat. And the Qur'an transformed them to be the best people on the planet. Ja'far bin Abi Talib, when he spoke to the king of Habasha, he describes the effects of the Qur'an, the biggest miracle of the Qur'an. This is why Allah says, Ar-Rahman allam al-Qur'an. Why? Why is he merciful? Because he taught the Qur'an. Why? Look at what the Qur'an does. Look at the effects of the Qur'an. The effects of the Qur'an. Qur'an can transform an animal into something else. It can transform a person who has no morality, a person who has no rules and regulation in his life, to be someone who is full of morality and compassion. This same Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, he used to torture people for coming to Islam. He was beating once a slave woman from Banu Uday because he belonged to this tribe, Banu Uday. And he was beating a woman and he sat down to rest. And the woman looked at him and he said, don't, don't think that I am having mercy on you. I haven't stopped because I have mercy on you. I have stopped because I'm tired. This was Umar bin Khattab before Islam, after Islam. He's walking the streets of Medina, the outskirts, and he hears children cry. He goes to the house and he knocks the door and asks the woman who was in the house, what is wrong? Why are your children crying? And she said, my children are hungry, they're starving to death, and I have nothing to feed them with. And I will take the Khalifa by the forelock on the day of judgment. I will take him. Little did she know that she was actually talking to the Khalifa himself. And Umar bin Khattab, he saw a pot boiling on fire and he asked, why, you, why do you have this pot boiling? She said, I have this pot so that my children look at this pot and think that there's something being cooked and they go to sleep while waiting. This was a mother. He runs back to Medina, picks up food from Baytul Mal, picks it up on his own shoulders and his servant tells him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, let me carry this burden for you. He said, you will not carry my burden on the day of judgment. This is my burden. And he goes back to the house, he cooks the food for those children, he feeds them, waits for them to sleep and then walks away. And this incident is narrated by uh, Abdurrahman uh, uh, Yusuf al-Kahandalwi in his book uh, Hayat al-Sahaba is there. And these are the effects of the Quran. The Quran transformed these people to such an extent that they came out to change the world around them. Now brothers and sisters, we can carry on talking about the effects of the Qur'an and its importance. The best thing you can give to your children is an education. And the best education is the education of the Qur'an. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and, and teach it. Teach it. Why? Because this is the ultimate sign of Allah's mercy. No Qur'an, no justice. No justice, no peace. No peace, no progress. So the progress Muslims made for 1000 years, politically speaking in the world, when they came into Al-Andalus, people talk about the golden age and they talk about the libraries of Baghdad and the hospitals and all the civilization Muslims had created, all the books they had written, all the scientific and technological advancement they made, it came from the Quran. The Quran is the source of knowledge. The Quran opened the minds of the Muslims and the Badus and the Arabs and the non-Arabs to the world they couldn't see before. And this Quran changed the history of mankind, the course of history forever. Without the Qur'an, this world would have been a different place. You don't believe me? Go to South America and see how people live in Mexico. Go to these countries like El Salvador. Go to the US. Go to South Africa and see how people live. They have no Qur'an, their lives are hell. 
You know, 50,000 people have been killed in one year in Mexico due to drugs feud. And you know, you, you people live in Bradford, you know what I'm talking about. It happens here. It happens here. It happens in London. It happens in Manchester. Our own children have lost the plot. You know why? Because we have failed. The example the Sheikh gave, our beloved Sheikh, the example he gave the man who came to Umar ibn Khattab complaining, my son is rebellious. My son does not listen to me. The question is, what did you do for your son? When an, opp when an opportunity arises, brothers and sisters, we always fail to take full advantage of these opportunities to protect our children from the traps of shaitan. And Allah has taught us. Now, there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where Abadu came and he saw the Prophet Sallallahu kissing his ch children. And he said, you kiss your children? He said, yes, I kiss my children. And he said, I don't kiss my children. I don't kiss my children. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man la yarham, la yurham. The one who does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. And that mercy applies directly to children. You do not show mercy to your children, your children will never show mercy to you. This is a fact. This is a fact which cannot be changed. And what is mercy? What is mercy? Ar-Rahman. Allam al-Quran. This is mercy. Allah is the merciful and He has taught the Qur'an, that's why He's merciful. Allah is merciful of course because He created the heavens and the earth. He's merciful because He's created the stars and the moon. He is merciful because He's created the trees and seas and fishes and animals, everything, everything for you to see and flowers and children and everything. But the biggest form or the biggest sign of His mercy is the Qur'an. This is why the month of Ramadan is so important. This is why the night when the Qur'an was revealed, Laylatul Qadr Laylatul Qadri khayru min alf shahr Tanazzalul malaikatu war ruhu fiha bi idni rabbihim min kulli amr Salamun hiya hatta matla il fajr Brothers and sisters in Islam wallahi I can talk about other things as well I intended to talk about the sacrifices of our ancestors especially in the subcontinent you know how our ancestors gave their lives in the path of Allah in order to in order for us to have this deen today you know and when we are tested for little things we let not only our people down we let our children down we let our children down if we do not take full advantage of situations like this wallahi why Allah I believe that we will be ourselves to to be blamed we will be blamed not only by our children on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question us about this neighborhood. You know, I was walking towards this masjid with our Imam, Imam Uthman, and I asked him about this neighborhood, and he said, This neighborhood is all mostly non Muslim, predominantly white people. Okay? And my question was, How are we going to give them da'wah? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put you and I in this country for a purpose right yes we have come here for a purpose and the purpose is da'wah the purpose was not to make shops and drive buses and do other things mashallah halal earning halal is a good thing it's not a problem but why do you earn the question is why do you make money is it to feed your stomachs is it to buy gold is it to buy a flashy car is it to put a carpet in your house all of these things will remain behind this church was made in 1930s right and as the Sheikh put it, who was worshipped here? The Trinity. Yes? And now it belongs to the Muslims. Now it belongs to the Muslims. And if you don't stand up today, brothers and sisters, and take control of this situation which Allah has given you, this is an opportunity. And if you don't take advantage of this opportunity, tomorrow only Allah knows who will be controlling this building. Today Allah has given this opportunity in your hands. It is your duty to pick up the responsibility and fulfill your responsibility. This family on its own can't do nothing. They are facing a debt of 290,000 pounds so that your children can be educated. There are 40 children who are memorizing the Quran here and I am sure there will be a lot more. And I am sure that these people will be the leaders of da'wah. They will be the source of light, not only in this area, we're talking about globally. We have planned missions to Africa. Wallahi, we are all one bunch. 
We are all in the same boat. These are our kibar. They are guides. And we work under their supervision. And we're going around the world trying to bring the message of Islam to the people. We're going to Africa very soon. And teams will be leaving from here as well, inshallah ta'ala. Teams will be leaving from Bradford as well. If you want to take part in these good deeds, brothers and sisters in Islam, now is the time to come forward and take advantage of this situation. I will be asking you tonight to make the nations fi sabirillah for this cause so that this house of Allah flourishes for as long as possible, for as long as Allah has given us, given us responsibility for this house. Now, I want you to pay attention to me for the next 10, 15, 20 minutes so that we can help each other to enter Jannah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has said in a hadith, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانِ فُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَصُفِّدَتْ الشَّيَاطِينِ when the month of Ramadan comes, the doors of Jannah are open and the doors of Jahannam are locked and Shayateen are chained. Allah has opened the doors of Jannah for us not only through the month of Ramadan by giving us opportunities to build masajid, to support this kind of work so that our children can have a prosperous future. Here you have an opportunity where some of the best Qur'an in the country are going to be teaching your children and on top of that this is going to be sadaqa jariya for the masjid the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in a hadith anyone who helps make a masjid here on this planet allah will give him a house in jannah and in another report the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said even if the masjid is as big as a sparrow's nest a sparrow's nest Allah will give you a house in Jannah. When Allah tells you a house in Jannah, don't think it is a house like your house. Don't think it's a house like your house here. Okay? A house in Jannah is not your house. It is a different house. It is a different kind of house. In your house, maybe you have arguments with your wife and pots break. In your house, maybe you have other problems, other troubles. But in Jannah, you will not hear any love. You will not hear any lies. You will not hear any arguments. Your wives will be turned into, mashallah, different species. Huh? And brothers will be turned into different species for their wives. So the brothers who do their, head, their wives' heads in, their wives will be happy with them. And the sisters who used to do their husbands' heads in, they will be transformed and they will be happy with their husbands. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He promises you house in Jannah, it is a different kind of house. The situation is dire, not only up north, in the whole country. If we don't get together, wallahi, if we don't get together and do something about this situation. You know, I am a khatib in London for a mosque in South Harrow. I'm a khatib there and I realize the situation. The, uh, the, the severity of the situation. I ask my community that it is your responsibility to go out and talk to the people, tell them about Islam. Last Saturday, I think last Saturday, not this Saturday gone, the Saturday before, we went out, 80 brothers from the community, we knocked every single door in South Harrow area. We covered about three to 4,000 houses, homes, okay? And we knocked the door, and we didn't tell them we are here to give you Islam. No, we didn't do that. We told them there's a park around the corner. We have arranged an iftar for you. Please come and join us for iftar. It's the month of Ramadan. We want to show the blessings of this uh, share the blessings of this month with you. Wallahi, 70% of the people, non-Muslims, who opened the doors, you know, even if they had negative thoughts about Islam, by looking at a smiley brother at the door, inviting them for a dinner. It changed their mind and we did not have one negative response. We did not have one negative response. Until we do things like this, things will not change. And for that, you need centers like this. You need, you need people like this to lead you and to teach you to go out and do the work. What happens is very often the Muslims, you know, they let the leaders down. When the leaders lead the community, they take responsibility, they take the burden. What happens is the community lets them down and the leader ends up suffering. So we are not like the people of Kufa. Brother Hassan was talking about. You know the people of Kufa when Ali radiallahu anhu, he was made the leader. 
and the people of Kufa, they gave him so much trouble that he stood up on the member one day and he said, I ask Allah to give me someone better than you and give you some, someone worse than me. They ended up with Hajjad bin Yusuf and Ali ended up with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman. His dua was accepted. So, you know, when your leaders come to you from the community to ask for support, like the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to his community, every time, you know, there was a problem, who did he go to? He went to his people. Ashiru ya nas, give me your opinions, O people. Bring what you have, O people. When he went to fight the battle of Tabuk, he went to his own people. He didn't go to the Romans to fundraise. He went to his own people. Wallahi, this is for your children to help you, to help your families, to help your children learn the Quran, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that you can have Jannah inshallah ta'ala.